so good morning good morning to everyone yes any doubts with respect to previous topic because we are going to start with a new topic today hmm good morning so any doubts so shall i move to the next topic then okay so that is structure of atom structure of atom right now in the name itself it is there this topic deals with the study of the component of an atom so in that case what do you mean by atom atoms are nothing but as we have discussed all the matters in this nature are made up of atoms right so that's what we have discussed even in dalton's atomic theory so all the atoms atoms all the matters are made up of atoms now during that time when dalton was proposing atomic theory right during that time they used to think that atoms are indivisible yes rohan atoms are indivisible so therefore they gave the word atom because atomio means indivisible okay na so that's why they called it as atom so during that time but now we know atoms are having once again sub atomic particles all of you will agree atoms are having once again sub atomic particles which we know that it can be proton it can be neutron or it can be electrons now further people have found even we have minute minute than that of the electrons and protons but anyway we will not go for that but for time being we can think that now whatever indivisible whatever indivisible so that may not be reality because even atoms are further can be having at electrons protons and neutrons so therefore how these subatomic particles are arranged how they are going to have that properties so these are all the things which we are going to discuss in this particular topic and that is structure of atom so please remember as a chemistry students you people should be understanding first what do you mean by atoms and what are the structural features of the atoms so therefore this is also one of the important topic okay so to understand the chemistry or to be master in chemistry you should be having thorough knowledge about the atoms and their structure so if you remember in the previous class it was all thing about equations and with respect to the some of the terminologies which will come across in chemistry like solution molarity molarity right so then we have discussed about limiting reagent and all that is with respect to the previous class now we are going much more in depth now we are going in depth so where we are talking about the atoms okay so try to understand this topic thoroughly and it's a bit large topic and it is having more weightage compared to your previous one and when it comes to your board exam it can have somewhere around 5 to 6 marks it can have somewhere around 5 to 6 marks for board exam okay so even sometimes it can be more more than 6 marks so that shows the importance of this particular topic so along with that along with that with respect to our competitive exams you can expect two to three questions for your competitive exams you can expect two to three questions from this particular topic 
that shows the weightage which is given for this particular topic that is structure of atom all of you have understood now to give an overall view of this particular topic to give an overall view of this particular topic first thing we are going to discuss about history history in the sense with respect to how these electrons have been discovered on what basis these neutrons and protons have been discovered and on what basis they have formed the charge of the electrons and protons and how they form neutrons are neutral in nature so that's where we are going to discuss about the history how they have been discovered on what basis which are those experiment on which basis they have proposed the presence of electrons protons and neutrons that will be first in this particular talk which we are going to discuss then after this they once they have discovered electron proton neutron and all then there was proposing the model for with respect to the structure of the atom okay so that's where next one is atomic models next we are going to discuss about the atomic models so in this atomic models there are many atomic models and some of them we have discussed in this particular topic and along with that we have discussed merits and demerits what are the advantage what is that positive point in that particular atomic model and what is the disadvantage or demerits with respect to this particular atomic model and due to some limitation they have discarded this atomic model and a new atomic model has been proposed like that one by one it is there okay so that is with respect to the different atomic models which we are going to discuss okay and you can expect questions from atomic model part from that particular concept anyway individual i will be, whenever i will be discussing i will mention which are those important one okay no need to worry so that's why we have the atomic models once the atomic model is done and their limitation has been discussed at the end we are going to discuss about quantum mechanics we are we are going to discuss about the quantum mechanic model okay so that is also related to atomic model only but based on the quantum physics quantum mechanic model okay so which we are going to discuss in the end where that's where we are going to have the very very important concept that is called as quantum numbers which we are going to discuss in this particular part and the last one is <coughs> writing the electronic configuration writing the electronic configuration so that's what we are going to discuss so please remember your topic is arranged so beautifully that it's like a flow one by one by one they have discussed and we are going to follow the same pattern as there is in your ncert textbook all of you have understood so this is where we are going to these are some of the concepts which we are going to discuss in this particular topic so first we are going to discuss about history how on what basis which are those experiments by which they came to know the existence of the electrons okay all of you have understood so that's where we have the faraday's first one will be faraday's cathode ray tube experiment cathode ray tube in our television old television not the new one in old television and all they used to use cathode tubes okay to have the pictures and all but nowadays it has been modified we have lcd led so new model has come but i am talking about old one so that's why we have the faraday's cathode ray tube experiment by which they came to know the existence of the 
electrons. We came to know the existence of the electrons. So that's where we have the cathode ray tube application. What is that application? By this particular experiment, they came to know the existence of negative charged particles in an atom, which they called it as electrons. Fine? So now if you see this one where we have a cathode ray tube, which is a glass tube, which is a cathode ray tube, where it will be fixed with the electrode. Where it will be fixed with the electrode. Fine? Where it has been fixed with the electrodes. So that's where we have the anode and cathode. Now, since it is positive, I will make it as anode. Okay? So this one I will consider it as cathode. Okay? Now, this tube, where we can maintain the vacuum or where we can maintain the pressure of the gas, whichever is filled in this particular tube. So that's where we have the regulation for purpose, evacuation tube will be there. Now that's where we have the cathode ray tube. Now if you observe it carefully, we have the electrodes and it can be filled with the different different gaseous molecules. Okay, whichever in which we are interested, those gaseous molecules we are going to fill it up. Now, when you pass the electric current, when you pass the electric current due to the presence of electrodes, now what will happen? There will be movement of the molecules will take place to different electrodes. We have two electrodes, anode and cathode. So there will be movement of the molecules will take place to respective electrodes depending on the charge present on them. Okay. Now very important point here is we can observe electric current only under low pressure of the gas when gases are at low pressure then only we can observe and when you are providing high voltage when you are providing high voltage only under this condition you are going to observe the electric current okay so that's where we have the gases at the low pressure and high voltage which will be supplied to their surprise they observed that from the cathode rays there will be movement of a particles towards the anode for their surprise that means due to Faraday's experiment where he observed there will be movement of a particles charged particles towards the anode it is originated from the cathode and it is moving towards the anode so therefore they called these rays as cathode rays they call these rays as cathode rays. So why they call it as cathode rays? Because they are originated from the cathode. They are originated from the cathode. So now what is that? They have the gaseous molecules under low pressure inside the tube. Now they have supplied high voltage. Now they have observed there will be movement of the rays or particles, charged particles towards the anode. Okay? Since it is originated from the cathode, they called it as cathode rays. Okay? Now, whatever I will be talking now, it will be the properties of the cathode rays. Whatever I will be discussing now, it will be properties of cathode rays. Okay? So these will be the properties of the cathode rays. So first one, which is that important property, that is, they are originated. They are originated from cathode and move towards the, move towards the anode and move towards the 
anode. That will be the first part. Which is that one? That is, they are originated from the cathode, which is an electrode, and it will move towards the anode. All of you have understood? So then even due to that reason of the, they will be called it as cathode rays because they are originated from the cathode. Okay? Now, next one. They don't have any colors. Okay? So they don't have any color. It's like atmosphere where we have different different gaseous molecules like nitrogen and oxygen. But whether we can feel just by their visibility? No. We can feel only due to our respiration. Due to our respiration, we can tell that we are surrounded by the oxygen. Otherwise, we would have not recognized in this atmosphere we have the oxygen because they don't have any colors. Same way, even cathode rays, they are invisible. They are invisible. Okay? Now, if that is the case, if they are invisible, how they could have recognized that there is a moment of rays from the cathode towards the anode. On what basis they came to know that there is a moment of the cathode rays? That should be the question. Right? Manjunath, it's not anode rays. That is different. I will come to that. This is cathode rays. Okay? So now, to answer that one, they have put one fluorescent screen beyond the anode. They have put the fluorescent material. For example, it can be zinc sulfide. It can be zinc sulfide. Okay? Now, zinc, please remember, zinc will have the plus 2 preference. Sulfide minus 2. Sulfide is nothing but minus 2. So therefore, zinc sulfide will be ZNS. Okay, net charge will be 0. So zinc sulfide, they have put a coating of zinc sulfide beyond the anode and they made the perforation on the anode electrode. They have made the perforation holes on the anode electrode. Now what will happen? Some of the cathode rays, they can pass through these holes and they can hit the fluorescence screen. And what do you mean by fluorescence or phosphorescence? So that is nothing but these are the materials when they will be taken the energy which can be in the form of radiation. When they will take up the energy, electrons will get excited and when they are coming back, they will emit the different wavelength radiation. That's where they is called as fluorescence. Anyway, don't worry. We are going to discuss this one during hydrogen spectra in this topic only. Very important one. But for time being, you can observe that fluorescence screen, that is in this case example is zinc sulfide. So in this case, fluorescence screen, what will happen? They will can make the different colors whenever they are hit by the radiation. That's where cathode tubes were used for television to make the pictures. Due to this reason only. Okay? So that's where on the basis of this they came to know the existence of cathode rays. Otherwise, cathode rays are invisible. They are not visible in nature. Okay? So on what basis they have identified? On the, by using the fluorescent material or phosphorescence material. Okay? So that's why on that basis only they came to know the existence of the cathode rays. Okay? So that is another one. So by itself it is invisible and recognized and recognized by using by using fluorescent material by using fluorescent material. So on that basis only they came to know that it was coming towards the anode because when they kept 
fluorescent material here, they didn't observe anything. When they kept the fluorescent material, after the cathode, they didn't observe anything. I have actually drawn reverse. Cathode should come here, anode should come there. Okay? Or otherwise, I will do it in that one. Okay? So I will make it as anode. Otherwise, in the exam also, you people will do the same thing. Preference will be like cathode should be on the left side and anode should be on the right side. Okay. Since these batteries, I showed it like this. That's where the problem came. Okay. So I will make it as anode. So here we have the zinc sulfide. Here we have the zinc sulfide. Okay. So that's why now cathode rays will be moving like this. Fine. So on what basis they are going to identify the cathode rays? On the formation of images on the fluorescent screen, which is present beyond the anode. How the cathode rays can enter into fluorescent screen? Because this anode they have made it perforated. That means they will be having the holes. All of you have understood? These two points is clear. Now next one. Whatever I will be writing, it is related to properties of the cathode rays. Another important property. Okay, Manjunath, why using the fluorescent material, sir? Okay, so that is because as I told, these fluorescent materials, they will be having a special property that fluorescence phenomena is nothing but these are the elements which will take up the radiations and they will get excited and when they will come to their ground state, they will emit the visible radiations. They will emit the visible radiations which we can observe by our naked eyes. Nothing else is required. We can observe by using our naked eyes. Uh, in a natural condition, if you want to take, we have uh, one insect which will emit the light during the night time. Have you observed? It will be emitting the light during the night time. Uh, insect. It will be flying insect, right? Now, that emission of light is due to one of the phenomena called as phosphorescence. Fluorescence, phosphorescence, yes, fireflies. Yes, I was not remembering that name. Yes, Ron, it is fireflies. So that light emission is due to phenomena called as phosphorescence. In detail, I will not go. So bioluminescence, what I mean to tell you is, this is a phenomena where due to the absorption of the radiation, an element will get excited and they were coming back, they will emit or they will give back the energy, whatever they have taken. But when they are giving back the energy, it will not be like a continuous, it will be step by step. So different, different visible radiations will start getting emitted. So I am not going in detail for this, because we have to discuss these things in the hydrogen spectra. Okay? So now due to that, what will happen? There will be formation of pictures or we can tell uh, wherever cathode rays have, they have hit the zinc sulfide screen, in those regions there will be formation of radiations or light. Okay? So or color, yes, there will be formation of colors, yes. So based on that we can tell that, yes, there will be existence of cathode rays. Otherwise, if you are not using anything like this, it is it is impossible to find the cathode rays because they are invisible. By itself, they don't have any colors. All of you have understood? Manjunath, have you got the answer? Why they have used? Okay, fine. So they have used to find out the cathode rays. Okay? So these two points, it's, they are related to properties. And since lack of place, I am writing here, it is also related to properties of the cathode rays. Okay? So another very important thing, what they observe here is, whichever gas you fill it up, 
anyway low pressure gas should be at low pressure whichever gas is fill it up there is no change in the properties okay so what i am meant to tell you is nature of the gas nature of the gases will not have will not have any effect on cathode rays on cathode rays so what i mean to tell you is whichever gas molecules you fill it up cathode rays will have the same properties any no deviations all of them will have the same property all of them they will show the same properties fine so therefore they are independent of the types of gases present in the cathode tube all of you have understood this is a very important point they are independent of the nature of the gaseous molecules present in the cathode ray tube it's a important point which is a property of the cathode ray tubes all of you have understood now next one in the presence of magnetic field in the presence of magnetic field and electric field in the presence of magnetic and electric field electric field they will they will behave as negatively charged particles negatively charged particles like electrons like electrons all of you have understood so in the presence of magnetic and electric field they will behave as negatively charged particles like electrons all of you have understood since they are negatively charged due to that also they are moving towards the anode anode will be normally considered as positively charged electrode and cathode will be considered as negatively charged electrode in a battery cell electrochemical cell we have different condition don't worry for time you should remember that generally anode will be considered as positive electrode cathode will be considered as negative electrode so due to that negative charge they are moving towards the positive electrode which is called as anode got my point so that's why we have the in the presence of magnetic and electric field they will behave as negatively charged particles like electrons got my point now later they concluded that cathode rays are nothing but electrons only cathode rays are nothing but electrons only so now based on these points we can conclude that all the atoms all the atoms will have same type of electrons number can vary number of electrons can vary but it will be the same type of electrons which will be present in all the type of atoms so that's what this point talks about third point which tells that nature of the gases will not have any effect on the cathode rays that is because all of them they have the same type of electron no different types of electrons so therefore there is no change in the properties of the cathode rays whichever gaseous molecules you can take still properties will remain same all of you have understood any doubt hmm? any doubt hmm? and the last one it will be extension extension of this one in the absence of in the absence of electric and magnetic field in the absence of electric and magnetic field cathode rays 
moves in a cathode rays moves in a straight line moves in a straight line okay without any deflection that means so these will be the sum of the points with related to properties of the cathode rays so originated from the cathode and moved towards the anode okay that will be first point originated from cathode and moved towards the anode second point invisible and recognized by using fluorescent material so which fluorescent material they have used zinc sulfide next point nature of the gases will not have any effect on the cathode rays okay so any type of gases cathode rays will remain same next one in the presence of magnetic and electric field they will behave as a negatively charged particles like electrons okay and the last one in the absence of electric and magnetic field cathode rays will move in a straight line without any deviation okay so that's what these are the properties of cathode rays fine and that's where discovery of electrons based on this that's where we have the existence of electron in an atom any doubts shall we move to the next one then okay next one will be related to j j thomson's experiment next one will be related to j j thomson's experiment where he identified charge by mass ratio where he identified charge by mass ratio okay j j thomson okay so now in this case what he has done here is manjunath i will follow exactly this one i will come to that anode properties how we will get to know it is moving in a straight line okay pragati it's very simple if i don't have any magnetic field or any electric field naturally these are the rays which are coming have kept exactly in front screen fluorescent screen okay na i have kept the fluorescent screen exactly opposite so in that way if they are moving in a straight line naturally they will should exactly hit the fluorescent screen at the center okay so if they are having any deviation then only they can move to other part of the fluorescent screen right so based on that they have concluded it will move in a straight line which i'll be explaining now okay jj thomson experiment is based on radiation property in the presence of magnetic and electric field that's what we are going to discuss now okay so brother based on that only they can to read it okay so for anode this one i'll come to that after this we are moving to the anode okay manjuna now what jj thompson did here is by his experiment they found charge by mass ratio they found the charge by mass ratio okay since we are dealing with the electrons since we are dealing with the electrons so we can write this one charge is same e it is a representation for the charge small e and mass will be related to me mass will be related to me okay now don't need to remember the name in his experiment based on that they came to that it will be 1.75 into 10 to the power of 11 coulombs per kg coulombs per kg okay so 1.75 to 10 to the power of 11 coulomb coulomb is the unit for the charge mass is the units by kg so therefore 
1.75 into 10 to the power of 11 coulombs per kg. That's where we have the J.J. Thomson's experiment conclusion. Charge by mass ratio has identified. So what he has done here is, he has kept an electric field and we will imagine this one as positive one, this one as negative electrode. Okay. Now along with that he has kept the magnetic field also. So north pole, south pole. Okay. So north pole, south pole. So that's where he has kept. Actually this will be in between. It's not like it's near to the uh, cathode and it is near to the anode. Not like that. It's a 3D view. So it will be like uh, in the middle and where this will be perpendicular and this will be the magnetic field. So like that it will be. Okay now. Now, whenever these radiations they will pass, that is whenever these cathode rays they will pass, they will have deviation towards the anode. They will have the deviation towards the anode. Okay. So whenever electric, in the presence of electric field, whenever these radiations are passed, they will deviate towards the anode. This is a fluorescent screen. And that's where there will be formation of the fluorescence. So that's what they can observe. It will deviate towards the anode. If I, if we are adjusting, J.J. Thompson, he adjusted the magnetic field and electric field in such a way that now they start moving in a straight line without any deviation. They will be, he has adjusted in such a way that it will move in a straight line where they are not going to have any impact on the moment of this radiation. Now, in the absence of electric field, only in the presence of magnetic field, he observed that it will bend towards the south pole. It will bend towards the south pole of the magnet. But my point, please remember, all are different set of experiment. This is due to the one set experiment. This is due to the second set experiment. This is due to the third set of experiment. In first experiment, what you observe? In the presence of magnetic and electric field, this will bend towards the anode. Okay? Now, he adjusted the force magnetic field and electric field in such a way that where they will cancel each other and this will be moving in a straight line. And in third experiment, in the absence of electric field, only in presence of magnetic field, you observe that it will bend towards the south pole. Now, if you observe it carefully, this deviation, that means bending from original path, it is getting deviated, right? So, this bending is going to be decided by amount of charge and the mass. It's a very simple day-to-day -day life observation. For example, I have a truck. Okay? So, I have a truck. Now, I have to take a deviation. I have to take one rotation at KR circle. Imagine yourself, you are sitting in a truck and you are taking one complete deviation in KR circle. Okay? So, I was coming from Aras Road, Aras Road and I want to go back to Aras Road only. Due to that one way, I am coming to the circle, I am taking a rotation and I am going back to the Aras Road. I am doing it by using truck once, all of you can imagine yourself. Second time, I am doing by using car. Okay? Third time, I am using it by motor vehicle, motorbike. So, where you will feel it's easy? Taking one complete rotation, where it will be a bit easy, fast. Motorbike, car or truck. You can imagine, you can just type MB for motorbike, for truck T and for car C. Okay, all of you will agree, right? Because it's a day-to-day -day observation. Naturally, due to the smaller mass, motorbike can be easily rotated. All of you are right, very good. It can be easily rotated. But then when I am increasing the mass, now it will take a little bit difficult to exact, take the exact sharp deviation. I have to make little larger deviation. 
That's what we can observe whenever a truck is taking a deviation or a bus is taking a deviation, they cannot take exactly sharp deviation like a bike. Same logic is applicable here. All of you have understood. Andani, how come car? No, car cannot be like bike. First it will be bike, then car. Yes, okay, you are writing in a series. Now I understood. So first it will be bike, then car, then comes the last one will be truck. So that is depends on the mass. Same logic is applicable. A uh, element which will be smaller, it will take sharp deviation. A uh, element is bit heavy, it will take slightly deviation. So whatever deviation is there, changing the path is there, it will be decided by the mass. And it is also decided by the charge. So based on the different different experiment like this, he concluded that this should be the charge by mass ratio of the electron. This should be the charge by mass ratio of the electron. All of you have understood? So how come charge we know sir? Because it is moving like this. How come based on the mass? So that's where how exactly what is that deviation it is taking? So based on that he was able to find out charge by mass ratio. Not individual. Charge by mass ratio. Okay. So that's where we have 1.75. Still more values are there. I have written only 1.75. 1.75 into 10 to the power of 11 coulombs per kg. Okay. So this is where we have the experiment. One is Faraday's experiment and another one is J.J. Thomson experiment. Okay, shall I move to the next one? Hmm? So another one is Millikan's experiment. Another one is Millikan's experiment. That is oil drop experiment. Millikan's oil drop experiment. I will not go in detail for this. Now, based on this, he was able to find what is the charge? What is the charge of the electron? So based on this experiment, he was able to find what is the charge of the electron. Now, what is that charge? Charge is minus charge. It is negatively charged. Right? So somewhere around 1.6 minus 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 19 coulomb. 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 19 coulomb. That is the charge on the electron. But negative sign should be there. It's a very small value. Negative sign should be there. Okay. So that is the charge on the electron. Now based on this experiment and J.J. Thompson experiment, even they were able to find out the mass of the electron also. Even they were able to find out the mass of the electron also. How it is possible? Because in J.J. Thomson experiment, they found charge by mass ratio. Here, they have got the charge. Naturally, we can find out the mass. Right? When I know charge by mass ratio and when I know the charge, what is that value? Naturally, I can easily find out what is the mass of the electron. That is nothing but what can be the mass of the electron? Mass of the electron will be, right? Mass of the electron will be charge divided by charge by mass ratio. Charge by mass ratio. Anyway, don't worry. These questions will not be asked. It is just for to make you understand. I am writing Coulomb, right? So earlier one it was 1.75 into 10 to the power of 11 Coulombs per kg, right? So coulombs, coulombs will get cancelled. Whatever answer comes, that will be in terms of kg per kg. When I will take it up, it will become kg, okay? So somewhere it will be, the value will be somewhere around uh, 9.1, if I am right, approximately 9.1 into 10 to the power of minus 31 kg. 10 to the power of minus 31 kg. That is the mass of the 
electron. That is the mass of the electron. On what basis they concluded? By Millikan's experiment, which we we'll talk about, oil drop experiment, which talks about charge of the electron, and J. J. Thomson experiment, that is, talks about charge by mass ratio. So together, they have included these two to calculate the mass of the electron. That's why it is very, very, very small value, 10 to the power of minus 31. We cannot imagine very, very small value. That means 0 0.00000, how many times? 30 zeros I should add, right? So that means if I want to write this one, 0 0.12345678 value 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 30. Now that all. So then comes the 91 kg. Can you imagine? Can you see the value 0 point? Then the decimal point. Such a small mass an electron will have. Right? So that's where we have the small value for the mass of the electron. And due to that, normally they will consider mass of the electron as zero. Normally they will consider mass of the electron as zero. And if you remember, in your high school you might have studied atomic mass, they will calculate by using neutron and proton. They will not conclude elect at the electrons. They will consider only neutron and protons. All of you have understood? Now Manjunath, I will come to your point. Now same way, with, same as this altered cathode ray tube experiment, they found another radiation, which is, they called it as canal rays. They called it as canal rays. Now, these are the radiation which will be originated from the anode then. So they are called as canal rays. But in your examination point of view, cathode rays are important. Okay. So that's why we have the canal rays. Now what you observe here is, these are the radiation which have opposite properties. Opposite properties compared to compared to cathode rays, compared to cathode rays, in the presence of, in the presence of electric and magnetic field, in the presence of electric and magnetic field. So what is that one? They have the opposite properties. Whatever cathode rays will behave in the presence of electric and magnetic field, exactly opposite these rays will be behaving. That means cathode rays, they will bend towards the anode, right? So here they will bend towards the cathode. So that's what they have the exactly opposite properties as that of the cathode rays. Now, very important point here is, nature of the gas, nature of the gases will have effect on the effect on the canal rays will have effect on the canal rays previous one in cathode rays this is very important in previous case in cathode rays what i have told they are independent any type of gaseous molecules Cathode rays will behave same. But here I am telling they have the different pattern. What might be the reason? Okay. So what might be the reason? The reason is very simple. Now we know that earlier, during that time they were not known. Now we know that we have a nucleus. Then we have a electrons. So which will be revolving around the Nucleus. So this is nucleus. It's a rough diagram of the atom. Don't worry. 
otherwise here electrons are shown less it should be 8 I'll try okay. so that's where we have the electrons there are no circles there will not be any circles please remember there will not be any circles I will come to that point Manjunath I will come to that okay so now what is happening here is uh, when it comes to canal rays, I am repeating it, when I am talking about canal rays, it is modification of the cathode ray tube experiment, okay? Now what they observed here is, these are the radiations which will exa behave exactly opposite to that of the cathode rays. That means if I take an example, if you go back, when it comes to the cathode rays, they were bending towards home. In the presence of electric field, they were bending towards the anode. But here, it will exactly opposite. It will bend towards the cathode. That is one thing. That shows that they are positively charged radiations. They are positively charged radiation, no doubt. Okay? So next one. When it comes to cathode rays, whichever type of gaseous molecules will be there, it will not have any impact on the cathode rays properties like charge and mass it will remain same but when it comes to canal rays they will have the different properties I am talking about charge and mass nothing else they will have the effect on the properties of the canal rays nature of the gases so to answer that one I am explaining this one Manjunath so I will answer that one to understand, to understand that one you should know this one so whenever atoms are there, nucleus is there in the center, revolve, it will be revolved by electrons surrounding it. But please don't think that there will be exact, the circles will be there. No, it is an imaginary line. It is an imaginary line. Okay? Just to tell that electrons are moving like this. That's why we are putting a circle. There is no definite circle like that. Okay? Now, Inside the nucleus, what is there? Inside the nucleus, we have proton and neutron. Right? So, electrons are outside. Inside the nucleus, we have protons, P plus and neutron, small n representation. Okay? Now, canal rays, they are actually originated from the nucleus. Canal rays, they are actually originated from the nucleus. Now, in nucleus, what are there? Protons and neutrons. And each element, they have their own set of neutrons, which are neutral in nature. They have their own set of neutrons. And when it comes to the mass, neutron will have the impact. Neutron will have the impact on the mass. Therefore, when it comes to canal rays, since it is originated from the nucleus, where number of neutron and number of proton will vary. Therefore, canal rays, they will have same amount of charge, but they will have different pattern of mass, depending on the nature of the gas. Because number of neutron will be variable. For example, if I take hydrogen atom, hydrogen atom does not have neutron at all. Hydrogen atom does not have neutron in its nucleus, right? But rest of the element, they have, but that number of neutron is variable. So, the, the same reason, they will have, canal rays will have different property because they will have different mass depending on the type of gas, okay? But when it comes to charge, it will remain same. In the presence of many electric field, they will behave as positive, yes. They have to behave as positively charged particles due to the presence of the protons, which will carry positive charge. Which will carry positive charge. Okay, I will repeat. Okay, so I am telling Kannada. So, in other due to the radiation, canal rays, nucleus in the horde Now, in the nucleus, nucleus alienate. Nucleus only proton and neutron are there. So now, neutron is there. This neutron is going to decide mass of an element. That is one of the important factors. This neutron is there. 
So this is one of the important factor to decide the mass. So other than that, under each element, other than the set of neutron irradiant, mass change up to how much? Mass constant is all. Mass change up to how much? Yeah, can under all element to other than set of neutron is there. How that look? That is when I am talking about protons. Protons are all charged same irradiant. There is no effect of the charge. Yeah, the gaseous molecules to all. कैनल रेस्ट चार्ज सेम रहता है, but मास चेंज आता हो गया था, so therefore nature of the gases will have effect on the कैनल रेस, so that is because इल्ली बंदा कैनल रेस के बंदा का two subatomic particles involve आ गए थे, वन दो प्रोटॉन, इन्होंने दो न्यूट्रॉन, अधे कैथोड रेस के बंदा का only one subatomic particle that is इलेक्ट्रॉन्स so therefore there is no question of change in the properties. Now you got the answer. Yalla re varta ki dia. So that's where we have the candle rays and cathode rays. So based on this and many other experiments are there which is not there in your syllabus. So based on this they came to know the existence of proton, neutron and electron. Yes Manjunath when I am talking about cathode rays it is only electron. But when I am talking about candle rays, it is proton and neutron. So, here do bare bare element, subatomic particle irodhrinda, properties change aakta ho gata hai. Gaseous molecule change aada hai, properties kuda change aada hai. Especially mass will change. Aadar hai, cathode rays ke bandha ka bari electron matra irodhrinda. So, charge variation aada la, mass kuda variation aada la. Okay, all of you have understood. Mathe naru dots, if you want me to repeat, I can repeat it once again. No need to hesitate. Artha agi dhya? So, cathode rays, canal rays. Yad rudu difference gutta agi dhya alwa? All of you have understood. What are the differences between cathode rays and canal rays? Okay? And, I am very happy that you people are asking the dots and you people are asking repeat Mardi Kerta either. You people are asking me to repeat. I am very very happy. Okay. You should not hesitate. And even for others because daily I can see some of the students name who will be asking the questions. Only some students will be doing that one. Even for others also I want you people to ask the questions if you are having anything, any doubts. And no need to hesitate for language. Okay? So we are not here to learn the language. All of us, we are learning the subject. Even Raghavendra sir is learning the subject. No one can be 100%. Okay? Sadhu Koskara, no need to hesitate. I know Hindi, Kannada, English. Any of these three language, you can ask. But bit where is Nangu Baranga? Okay, na? But the language again, कन्नड़ दल के ये नहरता रहे ना उर्दू रेल विचार मारता रहे ना नो नीड टू हेजिटेट वी आर ऑल हियर टू गेन द नॉलेज ओके फाइन सो ये नहीं डॉट सिद्ध के और थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच टेक केयर ओके ना सो नाले बरवा आगा यू पीपल शुड रीड दिस वन एंड कम एस्पेशली व्हाट एवर आई हैव डन एंड इफ य� so while coming tomorrow, you go through all these things. Fine? Thank you. Thank you very much. Take care. Thank you.